I'm going to be talking about the genetics of Fuchs corneal dystrophy and some of the advances we've made here at Mayo Clinic over the past several years. As you know, Fuchs corneal dystrophy is, is typically a genetic disease of the corneal endothelium. However, we know very little about the genetics of that, but that's tending to, to change over the last few years. Uh, there have been some uh, discoveries done by other groups finding some uh, genes linked to to Fuchs dystrophy, but that seems to be uh, the cause and minority of patients. So until a couple of years ago, we probably didn't really know the genetic link in the majority of patients. Several years ago, we did a genome-wide association study, which strongly, very strongly linked the transcription factor 4 gene on chromosome 18 to Fuchs dystrophy in the majority of patients. Subsequently, that ORC has been confirmed in five or six other, other reports. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. You know, we may have a genetic link, but that doesn't tell us much about uh, what the defect in the gene is, how the gene causes the disease, and what are the downstream biochemical reactions. As far as the, the downstream effect, there's very, some very good, inter good and interesting research uh, uh, identifying that Fuchs may be related to oxidative stress, to uh, endoplasmic reticulum stress, but what happens between the gene and those final pathways is very much unknown. Uh, I'm working currently with Dr. Eric Wieben, who is the head of the medical genomics facility here at Mayo, and he's been helping us investigate the transcription factor for genes, specifically to find out what goes wrong in the gene, if we can find a genetic defect. And uh, about a year ago, he hypothesized that it may be a trinucleotide repeat, which is the genetic defect. A trinucleotide repeat is exactly that. It's where you have a series of trinucleotides in a gene that continue. In our case, this is CTG trinucleotide. Uh, trinucleotide repeats are common in, in the genes, but usually these fragments are very small, of several repeats or a dozen repeats. Uh, but when these repeats become very, very long, as in many dozens or hundreds or even thousands, they can become pathologic. Uh, in chromosome 18, it had been described before that there was this repeat in a part of the transcription factor 4 gene, but it wasn't certain what that repeat was linked to as far as the disease. Uh, there was some theor uh, theory that it may be linked to schizophrenia, some other psychiatric diseases. Uh, but Dr. Wieben uh, theorized that this may be related to Fuchs dystrophy. And indeed, when we looked at our patients with Fuchs, comparing them to control patients, there was a, a very large difference. So it was highly significantly associated uh, with the trinucleotide repeat, meaning that in far Fuchs patients, it was very possible that this trinucleotide repeat may be a pathologic. Again, this is just the, the second step or the second tip of the iceberg, or, or chipping a little bit deeper into that iceberg. We still have a long way, long way to go. There are lots of intermediate steps. And I think this is going to be a very complicated uh, story to unravel. This is not a, a simple condition where you have one protein goes wrong, it changes some protein somewhere in the cell, and it changes a mechanism or function, and that's it. Such as uh, a receptor protein goes wrong, that receptor doesn't work. This is a lot more complicated. Transcription factor 4 is a transcription factor. Transcription factors are involved in controlling and regulating other genes. These transcription factors are critical, in, in utero in development, but they're also important uh, you know, throughout your life because the transcription factors tend to be very tissue specific and the transcription factors to a degree play a role in, in why a thumb is a thumb and why a liver is a liver and how those, how those different tissues work. So each tissue, each cell type has, has very specific transcription factors that help control the, the nature of that particular cell. And this is probably true for the endothelium as well. What transcription factor 4 is known for, for several things, a variety of different pathways. One is epithelial to mesenchymal transition. And epithelial tra to mesenchymal transition is a process that controls the nature of the cell type, whether it has more epithelial properties 
or more mesenchymal properties. And this is a very important pathway in the transition from an epithelial type cell to cancer. So epithelial to mesenchymal transmission is a critical step in how many epithelial cancers develop. And transcription factor four has been implicated uh, as playing part in this, in this process. So what do we think may be going on with transcription factor four? Uh, how does this trinucleotide repeat uh, cause the disease? We have some theories. Uh, the transcription factor four trinucleotide repeat is part of the intron of the gene. A gene is split into introns and exons. The majority of genetic material is intronic and is not really participating in the coding of the protein itself. The exonic material is that code which goes into, into coding the protein. So the intronic material controls the regulation of the gene, uh, how that gene is transcribed. And this trinucleotide repeat in TCF4 is intronic. So it likely has something to do with how that gene is regulated. Uh, we're starting to look into that. It's a complex process. And like I said, it's gonna be very interesting unraveling these details. We also wonder whether transcription factor four may interact with other genes in order to provide uh, or to cause Fuchs dystrophy. If you think about it, we don't normally see families where you have Fuchs dystrophy from one generation to the next, where a father has a corneal transplant, then the son has a corneal transplant, and the grandson has a corneal transplant is a lot more complex. We definitely see clusters in families. It is a, f a familial condition, but there's a wide, wide degree of disease severity within a family. Uh, and also, why is it more, or at least more severe in women? These are some of the things we, we need to, to figure out. Uh, I think we're at that second step, that second chip off, off the iceberg. Right now, we're looking at how this trinucleotide repeat is transmitted from one generation to the next. Uh, trinucleotide repeats are, are, uh, are dynamic mutations, meaning that the mutation changes from generation to, to, to generation. Uh, the repeat may be 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 repeats long, but when it's transmitted to the offspring, the length of that repeat changes. If the length of the repeat changes, potentially the dose effect on the disease may change. The transmission from a father may be different than the transmission from a mother. There are other trinucleotide repeat diseases, uh, but not many. Uh, they're typically neurological diseases, Huntington's disease, myotonic dystrophy, spinous cerebellar ataxia. And in some of these diseases, it's known that, that, that the trinucleotide repeat can get worse if it's transmitted from a mother to an offspring, but maybe actually get better if it's transmitted from a father to an offspring where the, where the repeat contracts. Within the cell, the repeat can have a number of functions. The best way to sum it up is that this lengthy repeat just confuses the, <coughs> the, uh, the gene transcription signal. <coughs> the uh, polymerases that, uh, that uh, copy genes sort of get stuck on the trinucleotide repeat. And this can affect the, uh, the daughter copy of your gene. This can also affect DNA repair mechanisms. So the DNA repair mechanisms that are constantly going on in your body may be impaired or affected by these repeats. So, so these repeats can have a variety of effects within, within the cell. So it's very, very complex. I think some of the very interesting questions we, we have about the disease, again, is, is number one, what goes wrong with that transcription factor for protein? So what are the, the questions that need to be answered? Uh, I think this is gonna be a very, very complex picture that we're gonna come up with Fuchs dystrophy. I think it's gonna take many researchers and potentially a number of years to, to answer the question. But what are the, some of the really interesting things that are going on? Uh, number one, simply, what goes wrong in transcription factor four? What does that do biochemically to the cell? What's the downstream effect? Uh, is it really an oxidative stress that is uh, the ultimate biochemical mechanism? And how does TCF4 cause this? 
are there other biochemical processes uh, involved as well, such as some impact on epithelial to mesenchymal transition? Can TCF4 change the, 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 the characteristics of the, the cell, whether it has more of an epithelial versus mesenchymal phenotype? Are there other genes involved? Uh, and then within a family, why is there so much variation uh, in expressiv expressivity? Uh, why are women more, more affected? Are some of the sex hormones involved somehow with this transcription factor in affecting the, the expression of the gene? Uh, these are all very, very complicated issues, uh, but I think they're, they're questions that need to be answered so we can understand what's going on with Fuchs dystrophy, ultimately so we have some thought on how we may be able to treat and control and prevent the disease.